guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today we will take a look at a special topic in World of Tanks and that is seeing opportunities. I want to give you some advice on how to recognize those opportunities and how to assess their consequences. If you're interested in more reviews and gameplay, go to YouTube and search for World of Tanks with Bruce to get all of my videos or click on the subscribe button and now let's go. In World of Tanks, there are lots of players who do not really assess which consequences exist for a particular action. Not doing this will, will result in trading negatively from right from the get-go. So sooner or later, those players will be taken out and will not have an influence on the game. In this video, I will show you how you can develop courses of action, analyze consequences and hence create opportunities in order to trade positively, save hit points and have a bigger influence on the game. Let's go. Here we are in the first game. We are spawning on fjords in the west and let's first of all take a look at the map. Spawning on the map fjords in the west the situation usually looks like this and the problem of this map is as I have addressed in multiple videos is this position is super important right here in the middle however the access to this position is mainly given from the eastern spawn and so the western spawn is definitely in or does have definitely a slight disadvantage so what i want to do in a medium tank usually spawning on this position i want to go here and get um, a first shot opportunity on light tanks that are moving towards this position and from there on you really have to assess what's going on and then make some decisions in the game all right so that is exactly what we are going to do now assessing the situation at the beginning we are in a tier 9 matchup against the tier 8 and tier 9 tanks there's one light tank in the game which is the ebr 75 on the enemy side and there's one artillery and i would always recommend to use the first 30 seconds of the game to analyze the situation and to ask yourself first of all how many light tanks are in the game then second um, how many arties are in the game and then third what is the strength of your tank what are your peer competitors in the game like what is your main opponent in the game and how strong is your tank in the game and against the um, against your opponents that you will most likely be facing okay so as you can see i loaded he because i want to make as much damage as i can for people that are crossing um, and moving towards the middle of the map And as you can see, the only tanks that are playing aggressively towards that position are, as it looks like, our tanks. And there's not even a single tank besides the EBR-75 crossing towards the middle of the position. And now this is the time where you just have to be patient. You have to be patient and you should definitely not throw away your tank. Now, um, what are the options that we have right here? We could play... We could move forward aggressively towards the middle of the map. However, we do not have enough um, information so far um, because there could be some light tanks, uh, sorry, some tank destroyers in the position right there at the um, E7 position. And so um, I definitely do not want to go there, at least not right away, um, because I would be taken under fire from those tank destroyers and I would maybe lose. Um, three quarters of my HP so instead I want to peek out and see if I get spotted and so far it looks like I am not getting spotted so um, um, let's pause here real quick and let's um, make the minimap bigger so um, as long as I'm not spotted right here then chances are that I can uh, move into this position and uh, maybe I can maybe I will be spotted on my way so from here to here um, but then the reaction time of the enemy tank destroyers is um, I would say reduced and I can make it here maybe with only uh, taking one shot of um, the three possible tank destroyers that I expect to be in this um, position. So this is why I why I went um, back and forth in this position um, to see if I get spotted right away or not. And um, as you can see, now I am moving towards this position, um, trying to uh, move a little bit left and right. And as you can see, yes, I am spotted, but 
um, the enemy team did not have enough time to um, to actually get um, to get a shot on me and on my tank. Now, um, it is very very important that we manage to win this position. Now, the problem that I have is that the the enemy light tank is still alive, and so I want to um, keep my turret um, facing towards this position so that as soon as he moves out to make damage towards me then I will um, get the chance to take a shot on his tank. Now as long as he is in this position I really do not want to move further out because he might let's see okay we really want to uh, back. Looks like looks like he's not too much interested towards me, which is uh, strange. But um, that is due to the fact that uh, our heavy tanks have already won the south of the map, and so far the game is actually not very good for us. And now, okay, um, light tank is uh, falling down, and now um, the next situation. Um, is the question now what is my opportunity now let's pause it um, here real quick once again and now um, as you can see our team has already managed to win the south and um, yeah so chances are that some of the tanks are playing in this position um, however we definitely do want to make damage however the game is um, um, uh, is only four to two and uh, the um, actually we have um, lower HP pool than the enemy team does have. So we have 12,200 HP and the enemy team does have 14,600 so far. Maybe the um, number is not correct, um, but we'll see this now. But the problem, what I want to, um, to say is, the opportunity is to just push all the way up here, fall into the flank of those tanks and make damage. Now the problem is, and the consequence that you have to assess in your gameplay, there is one Scorpion G here, and there are also two other Scorpion. There's another Scorpion and the Su 130PM, and they might be sitting in this position. So once I move out here, um, yes, I'm playing very aggressively, but chances are that they will take me out of the game. At least I will. I might lose, let's say, 1,500 HP, and this is not worth uh, worth um, worth trying. So instead, I want to make sure that um, somebody else is moving out. Or maybe that those tanks are winning this position, moving out here and spotting those tanks. And um, until this, until then, I want to stand here and play a little bit more defensively. Um, yes, it sucks. However, you always have to assess the consequences of the opportunities that you see on the battlefield. And the worst thing that you can do is just move out and lose all of your hit points and not be able to... Um, have an influence later on in the game. So, as you can see, the the scorpion, one of the scorpions, was uh, spotted on the H9 position, which is nice. I already loaded HE in order to punish the scorpion or the maybe the Su 130 PM that might get spotted right here. And so far, um, the game is still pretty close. So I definitely don't want to just move out and lose HP. Yes, the game has been very disappointing right now. But here we go, that's what I wanted to do, of obviously, unfortunately, a low roll, and here you go. This is the time where I can now start moving. There's only the Su 130PM, nice, which is now also taken out of the game, and now I can, I can still be one of the first tanks advancing towards the enemy positions, but I still do have 1750 HP left that I can trade later on in the game. And as you can see, the game is... I would say not decided yet. Um, pretty close, as you can see. I'm obviously moving all the way down here to um, not get shots from the from uh, this position, position right here. Okay. I'm going to fall back because I am. A little bit afraid of the object 7032 which could move around the corner and then just take a shot on us looks like he is not so okay so now let's just uh, let's just uh, keep moving forward and obviously now we do want to be the first ones and uh, at the position where the where the guard is playing obviously 
this position is good for us. Yeah, please fall back, dude. Yeah. Okay, now the Scorpion G is also... Here you go, he has just shot, so now we can take him out. Here you go, we get a shot from the Brigetto 46, which is alright, and now we can play Hull down against him, and... Um, yeah, um, he should not be able to penetrate us, at least not with his uh, standard ammunition. And if we keep moving back and forth, back and forth, he might even bounce off of the side cheeks of our turret. Alright, perfect. Um, so, as you can see, we managed to preserve our hit points. We still have uh, approximately 1500 HP. And now, um, it is time to move towards the north and uh, hopefully we can get some more damage in the north. But this is how you should, in my opinion, play World of Tanks. Um, try to consider the consequences of the opportunities that arise in the game and um, don't throw away your tank. Try to read the minimap, try to gather all the information that you can get. And we can get a shot on the... no. Okay, so let's keep moving because we want to be the first ones making damage um, with the remaining tanks. And yeah, um, try to think of the consequences that your gameplay or that the, the, the possible moves that you can do um, have in the game. And then you will be much more successful because you will be able to trade positively, you will be able to maintain your hit points and you will be able to have an influence at the end of the game. And... In a couple of seconds, you will see how much influence you can still have at the end of the game. Obviously, I have enough hit points to trade. And... Looks like there are quite some hit points. That I can use to make damage. Here you go. Okay, the Type 4 Heavy is uh, showing me his side profile. So this is why... Uh, this is the first tank that I want to um, use in order to make damage. Now, fortunately, I took two shots, but that is all right. And now, obviously, I cannot penetrate the, the front part of the Type 4 Heavy with my standard AP. So the first tank that I want to um, take under fire is the T-10. See, here you go. Nice, the Type 4 has already shot, so I will use the next shot to kill the T-10. And now I... I uh, have a hard time penetrating. Maybe I can penetrate the cupola. No, but I am reloading the, the gold ammunition in order to be able to penetrate the cupola. And once again, I do have enough hit points to trade, so this is not a problem at all. And as you can see, um, the cautious gameplay, the smart gameplay, um, kept our HP, and so we could trade our HP at the end of the game. And yeah, even with such a bad start in the game, we were able to make 3,900 damage and um, approximately 4.2k combined. So yeah, let's now take a look at the next game and see how it goes. Alright, second game. This time we are on Prokhorovka, spawning in the south. And let's first of all take a look at the map. Spawning on Prokhorovka in the south, the game usually looks like this. And with a medium tank, there are multiple options. You can go to the right hand side um, or you can play in the middle. Now, you could also go to this position, which is kind of a, a bush, which uh, you can use in order to spot enemies that are playing here in the middle. However, with the E75, the uh, camo value is not the best one, so the ability to spot is limited. And so um, what I would do in this um, game, I would, uh, depending on the situation, go either here or maybe go to the middle and support the heavy tanks, uh, maybe on getting some crossfire towards the hill or maybe on um, the enemy tanks that are playing here. All right, so as you can see, we are once again in a top tier scenario. Um, there is no light tank in the game and there's one artillery. So the question is, can we take over the role of the light tank in this game? And the answer is clearly no, because the E50, and obviously it's not the E75, yeah. The E50 is a very huge tank. Um, and so the, the camo value is not the best one. Now, um, I still want to go to this bush and see what happens, but it looks like the M46 
uh, Korea pattern is going towards this position. Okay, so that means that I cannot go here. And which is fine. I mean, if he's playing in this bush, that is all right. And so I want to go and just play in the middle. Now it looks like our medium tanks, there are quite some medium tanks going to the right hand flank. So um, I think there's no use in um, myself also going to this position. Instead, I want to get a shot on the... Let's see, here we go. We can get a shot on the Charfuture. Nice, and he's taken out. That is super important because the Charfuture can be a very dangerous tank at the end of the game because he is an autoloader tank. And that is... Alright, now... Um, let's uh, make the minimap a little bit bigger and talk about the opportunities and also the consequences that we have in this game right now. So... Um, as you can see, um, we're playing in the middle. Now, the problem is if we move out too much, then we are exposed to the whole enemy team. And that is definitely not what we want to do. In addition, we don't want to be constantly spotted because then artillery might um, focus us and uh, we will receive damage. So instead, in this situation, we do need to play defensively and stay defensively. Yes, it is... Um, not a very pleasant gameplay however that is all what we can do right now and the only thing that we can do right now is move back over here and maybe get a crossfire situation on the um on the um uh, hill over here because our object 263 is uh, spotting the hill and that is now the um yeah the game plan that we have and that we want to do Prokhorovka is a map where you should definitely stay defensively at the beginning and not throw away your tank. Well, let's see, okay, let's destroy this house. This uh, house Looks like we are not spotted, okay, which is fine. And now the advantage in this bush is that we are a medium tank and uh, yeah, the camo value of the E50 is not the best one, however, even or still better than the one of the E75 and the other heavy tanks. Nice, so we can get a shot of the E75. And, um... Okay, now... Um, there is um, another opportunity that arises. Let's uh, pause here right now. As you can see, our object 263 is making pressure as well as our medium tanks. So... We could also move over here and also make pressure. Now, the problem is that some of the enemy tanks have not been spotted yet. So, for example, the WZ-120 uh, with, I think, 400 alpha damage. Now, the Shafu Tour was spotted here. Um, chances are that he might have moved back all the way up to this side. And then there are some other tanks that still could be in this position. For example, the Kunze Panzer, which has not been spotted um, yet and so chances are that um, those tanks will have a perfect defensive position set up right here and they will um, yeah just be able to maybe even take us out of the game so um, if I think of those consequences then my decision is clearly to at least right now not do this move and um, rather stay defensively a little bit and see what's going on and as you can see even the the Astron Rex is um, in this position now there is another tank spotted on the hill so we are trying to right now still gather information and see what is going on maybe we can take a shot on the e75 a little bit afraid that he is spotting us um, i definitely do not want to take this shot because the indicator is orange maybe if the tnh the tier 8 Check heavy tank moves out of cover. Let's see. Here we go. We get at least some spotting damage. Nice. Looks like our object 263 is playing very aggressively. And as you can see, that was not successful at all. So that is exactly what I meant and what I don't want to do. Now, looks like our medium tanks are playing aggressively. However, for me, it doesn't make too much sense. Here we go. We can get a shot on the TNH 105. Nice. Yep, we are spotted, but that is not a problem because we can fall back into cover. Okay. Now, 
All the tanks have been spotted except for the WZ and the Kunze Panzer. We know where the Astron Rex is and chances are that the uh, WZ is playing in this position. And now we want to pay attention on our two medium tanks on the right hand flank and see if they are losing um, hit points and how many hit points they are losing. And it looks like, looks like they are not losing HP only from the Astron Rex. Now they are moving forward, okay. And now this is the situ this is the time where I want to support this position because I feel that there is no other tank on this side and this is the right time to move towards this position because now the consequences are known, at least pretty much known, and now we know what the risk is with um, doing this move. Now I still want to be a little bit more defensively because I'm expecting the Kunze Panzer in some of the defensive positions over there. However, um, so far it looks like the standard B and the 122 TM did not receive any any damage from any other tank than the Astron Rex. I'm telling him to, um, to uh, fall back because I can just ram out the Astron Rex. Let's see. Okay. Fortunately, I cannot ram him. Yep, and um, as you can see, so once again, think of your opportunities, try to gather information from the minimap and then try to think about the consequences of this, of those uh, actions that you could take. Okay, fortunately we bounced on the lower hull of the E75. This is so tremendously important in World of Tanks because with this you will be able to save your HP and to have more influence in the game and uh, yeah, all in all to get better results and to have more influence on the game as I said and um, obviously to increase your win rate. Now, right here I wanted to play Hull down against the E75 and now as he has fallen back I want to use my mobility which is slightly limited in the, e, uh, in the E50, but I want to use my mobility to catch up and to move towards his position. And then my game plan is to proxy spot him so that he is spotted and that we can build or create a uh, crossfire situation so that the Skoda T50 or maybe the Object 777 can take the E70, can, can get shots on the E75. So this is my game plan right now. So far, once again, not too many damage, not too much damage, not the best result. Um, but uh, this is how you should play and once again, we were preserving our hit points. Now, once again, in this situation, if I would peek out, I would be, I would receive fire from all the remaining tanks that are here. So, yes, the game looks, it looks like the game is won. However, um, all the tanks right in this position can um, take my tank under fire as soon as I would move out of cover right here And so this is definitely not what I want to do instead. I want to keep the e75 Proxy spotted here you go. That's what that's exactly what I meant And so now I want to wait 10 seconds until I'm not spotted anymore And now it is time for me to move out of cover because now I'm not spotted anymore and now the chances of receiving damage are way reduced Okay, there are only three remaining tanks one of which is an artillery and now it is time to just move forward and uh, yeah, maybe I can now show you the ramming skills of the E75, at least I hope so. I'm spotted but now I don't care because I have preserved my hit points. Here you go, let's get a shot on the, now let's ram the 122TM, nice, 473 ramming damage. This is very, very nice in the E50 very heavily armored medium tank and I get can get another shot and as you can see yes a couple of seconds ago I was talking about a game which uh, in which I could only make a limited amount of damage but with our cautious gameplay with thinking about the situation thinking about the opportunities and uh, predicting the consequences of our action we could preserve our hit points and we could use our hit points to trade that to trade them at the end of the game and right now we made uh, 3300 damage 1000 spotting damage so 4.3k combined and i think this is a solid game in the e50 all 
Right, third and last game on Mountain Pass. We're spawning in the south and as usual, let's take a look at the map. Spawning on Mountain Pass in the south, the situation usually looks like this. And with the medium tank, I usually want to go to this position in order to get a crossfire on all the enemy tanks that are moving from here down to, um, to this position. Now, the question on Mountain Pass is, do you want to go all the way down to this to this area? And the answer, in my opinion, is usually no. I do not want to do this um, because, in my opinion, First of all, the enemy team does have the um, superior position right here. And then the second problem is um, the enemy team can get crossfire from here down to this position. So this is a huge death zone right here. And most of the time, if you are losing this part of the map, it is very tough to fall back. Um, you don't have cover by doing so, and then you will be taken out. So the the more the safer way to do is to not go there instead to play here and once you see that the enemy team is winning this flank then you can fall back down here to this position and set up a defensive position all right so we will definitely go to the G6 position as you can see we have spawned in another top tier game a tier 8 and tier 9 games so once again our firepower is one of the highest in the game now there are no artilleries on mountain pass but that, that actually doesn't make uh, too much of a difference because this map is actually pretty bad for artillery however in our position where we want to go that means that we will be RT safe there are on the other side two light tanks in the game one Lynx and then one AMX 1390 here go can we get a shot Okay, that was too bad. Fortunately, we bounced on the enemy TNH. Here you go. Maybe we can get a shot on the T30. God damn it. Okay. Very unfortunate so far. Here you go. Can we get a shot? Where is he? Here you go. Okay, that one might be a hit. We are spotted. That is not too much of a problem because we can just fall back. And then we will just wait here. I don't want to get shots from the Progetto 66, the Italian tier 9 autoloader tank. Here you go. Finally hit him. And I think the previous shot was also a hit. Um, his hit points are quite reduced. Okay, let's see. Looks like we're not spotted right here. Let's move out a little bit further. Move out a little bit further. Okay, our light tank is spotting for us, which is good. Okay. okay, as you can see, we are spotted. So it looks like there's one tank standing in the in the bush on the um, right here. Ah, here you go. The AMX 1390, and obviously he should not have a chance to penetrate us frontally. And looks like he's even not moving back. Yes, he is moving back, but. Oh, come on. Okay, the gun is trolling us. See, maybe we can get a blind shot. Okay, where is he? Looks like he already moved back. Okay, so... Um, looks like the enemy team is uh, winning the 9 and 0 lane. And so the Burrask has already recognized the situation. I did the same and obviously I want to now help the T95 and the 50 TP to secure this flank and there are two projectos and now I can show you show you hopefully the ramming skills of the E75 that would be a pleasure against the projecto 46 now those two tanks are pretty dangerous because they are two times autoloader tanks however I would just ram the uh, Progetto 46 with a reduced HP and then I will just go. Let's just ram him. I don't mind if I take a shot <laughs> Here you go 612 damage by ramming the enemy Progetto and now let's just take out the other tank. Okay, that wasn't the Yeah, I 
could have played it a little bit more, let's say, cautiously, but um, I mean, if you can ram a tank in the E50, then okay. You should definitely do it. Okay, so let's see if we can make pressure towards the IS-5. Looks like um, most of our team has relocated from the left flank. However, that also means that the enemy team is winning the left flank, but we can deal with this later on. Let's see if we can get a shot on the AMX. Oh, okay. <laughs> was a little, a little um, mistake by me. Please don't push me. Okay, here's just shot. Can I get a shot on the IS-5? Fortunately, no. Okay, so what options do we have? Let's uh, pause here real quick and let's uh, once again talk um, about the game. So, looks like we have lost this uh, flank, which was kind of expected. Now, we could push all the way up here. However, um, we would face a defensive position right here. and We would also have to face uh, the IS-5 frontly, which has um, yeah quite some quite some armor. So this um, the consequence of this action would be that we would definitely lose some hit points. Um, we could also move here. However, we would be in a crossfire situation from here and from here and maybe also from here. So that is also very bad. Um, plus, they would have the high ground and they would be able to shoot on our. Um, upper hull so we would also lose hit points so instead what we want to do is we want to go all the way back and set up a defensive position so let's do it fortunately we are sitting in a medium tank plus obviously the enemy is leading 624 and does have a hit point advantage right now as you can see, it was, uh, in my opinion, a good choice not to go into the middle because um, we would have been taken under fire. And now let's see if we can still win the game. Doesn't look too good. 4 to 7. Okay, 5 to 7. Now, hopefully, the 50 TP will move back and we'll just concentrate on holding this flank. Yeah, 40. Richard 46 is uh, saying, go back, idiot. Um, well, yeah. I guess he's true. Looks like the enemy team is making pressure. However, we have quite some nice, some uh, a, a nice defensive setup here. And uh, plus, we do have the, the Doom Turtle, the T95, just sitting there and without artillery in the game. That is kind of a, yeah, a mobile bunker in this situation, which is definitely capable of holding the flank. And as long as we are supporting him. We should be fine. Okay, six to seven, so we catched up. Let's see if we can finish off the. Okay, that was uh, bad aiming by myself. Let's see, can we get a shot on the? No. Okay, Pantera is shooting on us. However, we bounce. Nice. So now we are in the advantage of having the high ground. So our slightly armored turret front is. Um, helping us out and is enough to bounce the enemy shots. Now obviously we once again want to play smart and not lose hit points so we just want to peek out in order to spot the enemy team and we definitely want to pay, want to be uh, patient in this situation. Now we also only made 1700 damage so far but as long as we are keeping our hit points or remaining hit points I should say and as long as we are playing smart then uh, we will be able to increase the amount of damage at the end of the game. There is enough hit points still in the game. Progetto46 is telling our team to just sit back and uh, be relaxed in our defensive position and that is exactly right in this situation. That's what I'm telling the Progetto46. Now let's see. The biggest problem in, or the biggest uh, danger in this situation is to be is to not be patient and to lose HP. Now the 50 TP is uh, facing the AMX AC48 frontly, which should not be a problem at all. However, as as soon as uh, those tanks will flank him, then he is basically lost. And so I want to see if I can help him out. 
That looks like he is falling back. <clears throat> and so let's fall back into the... Yeah, he should definitely fall back. Come on, dude. Just fall back. And you will be alright. <clears throat> the game is very close. But... Um, Okay, he's not falling back. Okay, that's how it is. Um, but I definitely don't want to um, drive all the way towards him to help him. I s instead want to go to the defensive position. <coughs> okay, maybe we can make pressure on this flank. Like, I'm afraid that the uh, Object 27A and the IS-5 are making pressure on this flank. So <clears throat> let's see. The game is still pretty close. And obviously the enemy team does not have artillery support, which is good for us. So let's see, the 50 TP is falling back, but I want to okay. Hmm. MX 1390 and also the MX 30 are making pressure and I think I should fall back and support the Brigetto 46 <coughs> Sorry On top of the hill If there was artillery in the game the T95 would definitely um, have a problem, but um, Fortunately that is not the case and now the MX-30 and the MX-1390 are one-shot. Um, now, this game might not be the, the most interesting. However, in my opinion, we are doing a very smart... We are, we are applying very smart gameplay here and preserving our hit points and just making sure that we man the defensive positions that we need in order to win the game. Let's uh, peek out in this bush and see if we can spot somebody. No, we cannot spot anybody. However, we are spotted. So <clears throat> Let's just fall back um, And let's see Looks like the 50 TP is not holding the right flank, which is bad, but the Progetto 46 is uh, seems to be a very strong player and He could already uh, okay. Sorry, dude. Let me go all the way there and maybe I can get a shot on the here you go. Oh, maybe on the engine deck. I wanted to light him up, but that did not work. And now he is one, so I will move back into cover. Plus, I'm proxy spotted. And I definitely do not want to fall down here. Okay, the object 274 Alpha is also in this position. I do not want to fall down here um, because I would definitely lose some of my hit points and throw, maybe even throw away my tank. <coughs> made 2100 damage and the game is still pretty pretty close and now I am thinking of pushing the MX 1390 and the shuffle tour because they are one shot and so the only tank the MX is also one shot so um, yeah we get support by the Okay, now we can ram him out, nice, and okay, I want to actually take out the MX-1390, however, that was done by the uh, Brogetto, very nice gameplay here, and together with the support of the Brogetto 46, we can take out those uh, three remaining tanks, and um, yeah, in the end, we win the game, because the 50 TP has managed to also secure the right flank. So yeah, as you can see in the end we made 2700 or actually approximately 2800 damage um, 3800 combined and once again um, if you think of the consequences that your opportunities will have in the game or that your um, possible actions will have in the game you can preserve hit points stay alive until the end of the game and then you will definitely get the damage that you are looking for in your games. 
Alright guys, that was it for today with my little introductional video about decision making and seeing opportunities. What do you think about this topic? Just leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Consider subscribing to my channel and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.